Oh, sweet my, you muted. Oh, I, my baby's machine was going off. So oh, I was like, okay. Okay, you're good. Okay, she got to take care I think the T wanted to ask one question In, before we um, move on. Yeah, actually, what um was going to... What I was going to do was, because Velvet answered uh, many questions that we had as a collective. Yeah. Before I appreciate next, that poetic. Before we go to the next, I just wanted to nip this in the bud, Velvet. I know you've probably been asked this plenty of times, but now that you're doing this actual interview with people that like report on carbonation, can you clear up the rumor? about you leaving a child behind to go follow behind Nature Boy. Is that true? I don't have no children. Uh, Eliana is my only child. I ain't never leave no child to be with Carbonation. Okay. I guess pe people- The only child I have is Eliana. Now I've taken care of other 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 men's babies. They, they reference in Aiden. In because of that newspaper article, where Okay, so I was in a relationship with this guy. He had a baby. The baby's mother was not involved. And it was a it was an infant. Like he was about four months when I came into his life and I felt really bad for him and I knew that he needed a mother. So I stayed and I mothered him up until he was almost a year old. So the baby the baby actually thought that I was his mother because I was that present in his life. But me and the father didn't work out because he was cheating on me. So we didn't work out because I he was just doing a whole bunch of shit behind my back. So we didn't work out. But yeah, that's not my actual child. That's great that you cleared that up because the child actually, you know, resembled you. And a lot of people were like, well, they didn't correct it in the article. They said his mother and father. Because I took care of him. And to those people who took the article, they thought that I was his actual mother. Uh -huh. Because we didn't tell them details about what was happening or what was going on. First time yeah. we details about this, so that's a good thing. Thank you for answering that question. Yep, and I, I did actually did a, uh, a little video about that clearing that up back in the day but people still didn't believe me so i'm well, glad i'm glad. speaking on that now sweet my you are you um are you done with that question yeah yeah i'm done okay all right velvet before we before we get to the next chapter which is going to be costa rica um i think we're gonna um just kind of backtrack a little bit and i want to ask you when you initially got over to Melanation and you kind of started getting like used to how things were going there, how the group ran, how Nature Boy kind of uh, led everybody. Did you, when did you start noticing the brainwashing tactics that he was used on the group? And like, do you, looking back now, do you recognize like, just thinking back, like maybe like when y'all would wake up in the morning and y'all would have to always tell him what your dreams were the night before in a group <clears throat> uh, circle. Like what are some of the brainwashing tactics that you can remember from when you initially got over there? I didn't I didn't see no tactics, honestly, when I got over there. I didn't I didn't understand most of the shit that he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought everything was normal. I didn't start putting two and two together for real, for real, up until uh, we was in Belize in 2018. This was when he was trying to pursue Sheba. That's when I really started seeing shit. Like, it was weird how everything was going. But the only manipulation tactics that I seen during that period of time was how he tried to manipulate me to be his wife and allowing other women to come into our relationship without my permission. That's, you know, he had a lot of manipulation tactics towards me surrounded around the point of like um, um, him saying how I needed to be polygamous and it's natural and trying to teach the world that polygamy is natural and homosexuality is natural. In Belize, this is he is recorded him going on and on about how these things are natural. And he was like teaching this to us in the camp. 
which I, I personally have my own disposition with homosexuality, homosexuals and stuff like that. So in a sense, like I understood what he was saying. But after after a while, I started realizing that even when I would like make video videos and stuff like proclaiming his kingdom, it wasn't coming from my heart over there. It wasn't coming from my heart. And so I stopped making videos. I stopped really proclaiming and me and him would get into argument fights about um, me not proclaiming, me not making videos, me not doing this and me not doing that. And it, it became physically abusive and then it just I was already pregnant by that time so I couldn't even like I couldn't really dip out the way that I wanted to dip out in Mexico the way I wanted to dip out because I was so tied in that I had to maneuver and move a certain way to get myself out but I didn't start seeing manipulation taxes until Belize in 2018 Um, um, T, I don't know if you mind if I just ask this one question because it's like perfect timing. She put it up. Um, do you mind? Yeah, go ahead. Thanks. So, Velvet, you mentioned the homosexuality. Um, I've always wondered, were you okay knowing that he had an attraction for um, men? I didn't know he was into, I didn't know he was into that. When the video came out about him doing that sexual video with the with the doctor, with the white doctor, he actually kept that from us. He didn't let us see that video. He would like sit, tell us, delete it, delete it, delete it. And one day I brought it up myself. This was when, um, this was recently actually. Uh, one of the times I had recently went back, I brought up the video to him, and I seen him in it, and I'm, and I'm trying. I was trying to understand his disposition because other times he would be on the phone with men like the the clients from his past and I would catch him on the phone from the clients from his past and he would be showing them his penis and I would feel some type of way about it and I would ask him like why are you having these conversations with these men like what what's the issue with you showing your penis and stuff and he'll say like well I, I have these um, connect. They're my connects for resources. You can't just get rid of people in your life who's serving a purpose. So he was basically using these relationships like he was in the past for sex to get in exchange for money. And so I didn't really give too much of my energy to it because there was a whole bunch of other stuff that I was dealing with on top of that. Like the physical abuse surpassed it all. My, my mind, my focus was completely like it was zoomed in into like the physical abuse paired with the f mental abuse so when it came to his like orientation uh, or his preference sexually and stuff like that i turned a blind eye to because even though he was having those conversations with these gay men he would say like but i'm not gay i don't want to be in this relationship i want to be with you love bombing me i'm t like y'all have no idea the level of love bombing this nigga had to do to me like y'all seen just a, a little bit that he was doing to malia like he had to really, really, really love by me because I already had a certain type of standard and I had self-esteem. So he had to break me down as much as he could. But nah, I never agreed with him um, being a, a male stripper. I, I felt like that was his past. And people have a past. You know, in that moment, I felt like people have a past, so I forgave him for doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? But when I started realizing that, uh, a lot of stuff I forgot about too with his prefer his sexual preference, because like I told you, it was a whole bunch of stuff surrounding the situation where my focus was zoomed into specific parts more than others but i remember one time in belize he was on the phone with a uh a, a transsexual and the t was trying to get the transsexual to come to be in the relationship with me and him and this was when he was going hard about homosexuality being natural and he had me on um, admit on live that I was attracted to I was attracted to sexual transsexuals too so that me and him could be on the same level and in the same boat which I'm not a, I'm not attracted to men who like other men. I'm not attracted to men who want to have sex with other men. So when I said that, it wasn't that I didn't. It, it wasn't that I actually meant that. It was the fact that 
anything that he could use to manipulate me to fit his agenda or to fit the part, the character who he is. He'll get me to do anything or tell me to do anything. And if I didn't do it, it was arguing. We always argued. He was always hitting me, putting his hands on me, trying to kidnap my baby away from me and confiscate my documents so that I wouldn't leave. So his sexual preference, you know, I, I, I sort of forgave him for the shit because he was like, I'm not, I don't want to do that. I'm not that person no more. Da, 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 da. But I'm, I'm just like, at this point, I completely feel like he is uh, insecure when it comes to his sexual preference to the point where he feel like he'll be judged. So he can't really express how he, himself, how he truly wants to express himself. Like for real, for real, I think that he would have men and women. I think he's bisexual. And so, but I, I think he's going to, I think he feels like he's going to get judged by everyone online if he does that, because then niggas really gonna know that he ain't the fucking messiah needless to say he's trying to refrain from doing certain things on social media so that he doesn't completely put his air himself out you know what i'm saying but i don't i don't agree with his sexual preference actually there was a point where he was down in um, homosexuality and he said we don't want that here in carbonation that is not okay and then he was saying that um, we were all hermaphrodites and we all had penises and I was kind of confused. Do you think he has an attraction to the men that are in carbonation, not just transgender? Do you think that he might? Because I see he flirts with the pies. He flirts with them. If a man, if a man in carbonation embodies any type of femininity, He'll play on it. It doesn't matter if the man look like a woman or not. He It's about control for nature, boy. So for a man or you a boy, and that boy is supposed to be a man, but he embodies feminine, feminine, feminine qualities and he doesn't know himself, they're able to give their all of their power to nature boy to be able to control him. So nature boy is on his high horse when he's around them because he feels like he feels more empowered. He takes, he takes people's innocence. He takes the innocence of, of the, of the person because I'm going to say it like this, right? I believe that there are manly men out there with feminine qualities. Now, if that man chooses to express his femininity with another man, that's his preference. I don't agree with it, but that's his preference. You see what I'm saying? I don't have shit to do with that. But when it becomes uh, to a point where a man is expressing his femininity and then another man takes advantage of that or tries to say that he's going to be over this man and take his manhood just off of the strength that he has or he embodies some feminine qualities is some fuck shit. That's some controlling type shit. So in, in their little world, all of the men there obviously have feminine qualities and Nature Boy feel like it's all women there. Whether they're a man or look like a man or not, they, they are all are some little bitches to him. I don't know if you noticed, he has like a connection with Loyal and Pisces. That is just beyond me. I don't. Hmm. Why do you have to endure that? I'm telling you, those men will run to bow to his feet. He, Nature Boy, will say, The men act like more of my wives than y'all do. The men are, um, the men are more of a wife to me than y'all are. And he'll like degrade the women in the same sense and be like, yo, you bitches ain't shit. Like you, 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 the men treat me better than y'all. The men make sure I have everything I need better than y'all. So I ask nature, but I say, well, why don't you be with the men? Word. Um. And the men, the men there. They'll be like, that's my chief, that's my chief, that's my chief, they, and it's me and him to the end, and you withering, and they withering the fuck away. You sitting up there being considered as a eunuch, but you have a, a have an actual wife there with a child with her, and you letting nature boy fuck on her. Ain't no real man about to just sit there and let that shit happen. <laughs> no. Under the doctrine of another man, unless that man want to be with that man. 
that he's getting the doctrine from. Do you remember when Solar said that it was an honor that his chief took uh, uh, Zoka back to have sex with Zoka? He said it was an honor. I couldn't believe that he said that. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I you fuck you, bitch. Get her out of my fucking pan. Get her out of the fuck out of my room. Fuck She's her. She's in here? Fuck that bitch. Get her out. So look. Wow. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. I'll speak on that more towards the end when y'all ask me that question because I know that that's a question that's coming up and I'll explain. Okay. okay. Well, my, my next question, and I, I think this was in Costa Rica, and I know we're going back just a little bit. But this also touches a little bit on how the men are so loyal to him. And this was when uh, the incident with the bus, um, the paperwork, to touch on how he made such a fuss about paperwork. Now, I remember that. And I remember that the men got most of the abuse. The boy didn't really seem all that touched to me as far as the abuse. What would you say that was about? Was that about him? Wait, just wait, 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 wait. I didn't. Can you backtrack? Yeah. The uh, This was in Costa Rica when um, everyone got pulled over. I think everyone was on a bus. Mm -hmm. And um, the authorities needed some type of paperwork maybe it was for the tax and nature boy kept um saying that no uh i want to fight against the system i should be able to cross this border without giving you any type of paperwork you remember that yes i do yeah and i remember the video and the men were they were beaten up and the women too and I remember Nature Boy, he didn't seem like he was touched much at all. It seemed like the men really came to his defense in that time. Yeah, they did. So did I. No, no Val. The night y'all was going to the carnival. Remember he yeah, gave y'all a choice to go to the carnival yeah, or he gave y'all a choice to go to the, the, to the we beach or something? Yeah. And everybody said they wanted to go to the beach and he said he wanted to go to the carnival. Yeah. And I that's how y'all got into that melee on that bus. Yeah, I remember that. We we got what was the question though? Um the question was could that have been easily prevented had he just complied and showed and showed some paperwork? Nature boy, I don't know what the I don't know what he was trying to do, but the reason why we ended up in that situation, it wasn't necessarily because we were going to a carnival. It was because of the fact that we weren't stamping our passports. We were like six months overdue. So when we got pulled over on the way to the carnival, they took us to immigration jail. All he had to do was go get his passport stamp, get our passport stamp so that we wouldn't be in that situation. But once we got in that situation, this nigga tried to refuse which made the police force fuck us up because right. he was refusing and because he didn't want to get off the bus and because he didn't want to sign the immigration papers, they practically could have beat us to death if they wanted to, but they fucked over all of us. They let, they let the people go. Majority of the people who was on the bus had already had their stamps, but he was telling the people who already had their stamps to stand by his side and say, I'm going to go to jail with you anyway, even though I got a stamp. So those people had wound up in jail, but what they did was they incarcerated all of us, but they started letting us go one by one. So when it got down to the final, the final countdown, it was me, Omeg, Tron, and Nature Boy. We was the only people who didn't have the the stamps because everybody else who was there had left from from that little sector. So we was the only ones in the actual immigration jail. Like I was I was the only woman in the immigration jail by myself in the in the immigration jail with other women I did not know. And Nature Boy, Omac and Tron and and Key at the time, he was the one too. Key too. 
He didn't have his passport stamp. But if he would, if we would have just listened to the immigration people, we wouldn't have never end up in. We would have ended up in the immigration jail, no doubt, because that's the only facility that they could have held us in to get us on a plane to get to where we needed to go. But they would have never beat us the way that they did. They would have never put us in those cells the way that they would have never even treated us the way that they did. They treated us fucked up because Nature Boy was being fucked up to them. And then when on the video, I don't know if everybody watched that video, but when the video happened and the police started coming on to him, taking him, like trying to get him off the bus and stuff, he was saying the same shit. He was saying a visa on his panel. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. I love you, bro. Like, yep. he was a weak bitch ass nigga. Yes, we saw it. We heard it. I don't know, T, if you mind if I just, like, since Stinson just asked this question, I just want to throw this in. Um, this was my only Costa Rica question. Um, I know Nature Boy denies that that um, you guys didn't have a stench. When the whole group got kicked off of the plane, you guys missed the flight, and um, they were telling you that it was because of the odor, and Nature Boy made it seem as if it was a... Uh, uh, a discrimination thing was it discrimination or was it in fact true that the odor was too much there were black people in there from nicaragua guatemala honduras just like us darker than us right poorer than us we actually had money in that bitch compared to them them niggas didn't even have numbers to call them dumb people to get them out it wasn't because of no discrimination it was because of nature boys attitude Nature Boy had a very fucked up attitude to the. He was trying to manipulate the people in there. And they seen that shit. So they treated us like, bitch, <laughs> you could stay in this bitch for all I care. So, and then on, on top of that, it was distinct. It was this distinct because Nature Boy was. Okay, so before we actually went to jail, Nature Boy in the actual camp, he would promote taking showers as minimal as possible because he would say that we don't we don't need to wash off our um our um our first layer of our skin so that we can compute uh, information from the environment. So we wasn't really taking baths like that. Neither was we really using soap like in Costa Rica. Like we really wasn't using like we we had soap. And we shower from time to time, but it was a it was a big deal to him. Like if you got caught taking more than three to four showers a week, you was getting scalded. If you was if you was caught using more soap than normal or cleaning some shit, you you was scalded. You was scalded for it. You know what I'm saying? He used to always like argue with us about laundry. We argued about laundry. You know shit like that. So by the time we got to the to the to the cell, because we wasn't using deodorant, we wasn't taking baths, we wasn't doing that shit on a regular basis like everybody else was. So of course we smelled different when we went in that bitch. So when we went in, he was like, "Don't use the water." He was really super extreme. He was like, "Don't use the water. Don't use the soap. Don't do nothing. Just just go on strike. Go on strike." Don't don't eat. Don't do nothing. Don't do this. Don't do that. So he was collecting all the food for collateral in the fucking immigration jail to manipulate the men that was in there to gain control of the people in there. Then on on top of that, because we wasn't taking baths and stuff, by the time we got on the plane, they was like, y'all niggas stink like y'all need to take a bath. So it wasn't that they that they like didn't want us to leave. They only told us that the only way you're going to be able to leave is if y'all take a shower, like at least take a shower and change your clothes before you get on the plane. And so that's what we had to do before we went out the next day to get on the plane. Bam. So I guess uh, my question basically is it's pretty easy question, Velvet. Um, at it, was there at any point, was there any private talk amongst you guys that Nature Boy just may not be in his right mind after that bus incident and after your stint in, in jail in Costa Rica? Or were you guys so brainwashed at that point that you just thought that, yeah, you know, they're they're against us? Like what, that's, what when, was, that's when he was going the hardest. And all of us was like. All of us was like, we need to protect him. You know how he get online and he'll be like, protect the black man. Like every time his shit start hitting the fan, he'll super brainwash the people there. 
So like right now, all of the women that's surrounding him right now, they're not they're not looking at the situation like this nigga really is mentally manipulating me. They're not watching my panel like, oh my gosh, she's right. They're watching my panel like, oh no, she's wrong. She's just trying to take my chief down. She's just trying to say this and say that and say this and say that's not right. And they're all like from what they're t what he's telling them. They'll come up with a way to deny everything that's being said. But if you ask them a question, they can't answer it. If you sit there and show them what the fuck is going on, they, they can't sit there and even calculate it and come to terms with it because he has a control over their minds on like on some literal shit. These are the times when he go the hardest. This is when he put all of his energy in. See, when we not doing this, he he chilling. On the other end of the camera, he doing whatever the fuck it is he want to do. He's beating people. He's raping people. He's fucking molesting kids, doing whatever the fuck it is that he does that's wrong. But see, when the heat is turned up, that's when he be like, y'all need to protect me. Y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that. And everybody in Carbonation starts standing up there like soldiers, like they as strong as they are. No, bitch, you not strong. You weak. Com com compared to f how he look at you, he don't look at the people in Carpination as strong. He look at them as weak. And that's the only reason why he have them around him, too, because he's able to manipulate their minds. Anybody who it seems a little bit intelligent standing next to him, he'll start telling them, like, oh, so you think you smarter than me? So you think you could do it on your own? You're not going to be able to live without me? You're not going to be able to do this without me? Da, 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 da. And because these people don't have a lot of experience, they believe that shit and they be like i do need him i do need to be with him i do need to like yeah like and so they really start getting into the character that's what the fuck is really going on oh that makes so much sense it really does um let me tell you how i know because i was that person when my dad before my dad came to mexico to get me I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave with my child. I wanted to leave before my dad came to Mexico. When my dad came to Mexico and I disrespected the shit out of my dad and Tina when they came there was because that's when he turned up. He turned up to manipulate me. So I was like, no, don't destroy. No, no. I'm sitting there panicking off of the strength of him to save him. But it was only, he was only using me as a pawn. He wasn't, he wasn't. See, you got to understand the people around him, they're not actually like, this is what I want to do in my life. He's pushing his pieces on his board. If you are considered a piece on his board and he's able to use you, he, he will under any circumstance, under any circumstance. Absolutely. So when he when he says this is chess not checkers he literally means that he he plots on like he plotted on me the entire time like I ain't catch on to certain shit until completely after the fact because I never been exposed to this type of stuff. My dad never exposed me to this type of stuff. My dad actually was trying to protect me from this type of stuff to the point where he didn't necessarily teach me about it because he wanted me to never find it out. But not realizing that the the energy that's in me is going to attract whatever is going to attract to figure out what I need to figure out and get the experiences. So with Nature Boy, when I went when I went through all that with him or whatever, um, I didn't start seeing stuff until like after the fact to really learn the patterns. This is how I learned the patterns. You know what I'm saying? But he would say stuff to me like. Um, yeah, I, I want to get you pregnant so that I can trap you. He would say stuff like that, but I didn't know what he meant because no man had ever told me that before. Like, I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what that means. But he he, he always try to, like, uh, use something. He's always trying to use something to uh, reel you in, to manipulate you, to get you to stay or to get you to be on his side in some kind of way or anything he can use. Anything. Anything. He knew you wanted to be a wife and a mom, so he's going to give you He's going to give you that. So we uh, go to Chapter Mexico? Sure. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you want me to ask first, but... Yeah, yeah, go ahead and um, ask first. Okay. This question is so simple. I just wanted to know, when you were in Mexico, did you guys do anything in nature 
other than just go to the waterfall? Did you did you plant anything? Did you guys do anything? <clears throat> and when we what and when we did excuse me <clears throat> we didn't do shit in Mexico. We didn't build not a damn thing in Mexico. And when we did start building, it was off of the strength of me. Because yeah. I said that I wanted to have a garden. And when he started building the garden, it was so much of the drama that he was creating in our reality that we was damn near sitting in meetings every day, day in and day out, listening to this nigga talk about shit that had nothing to do with the build. We didn't build shit in Mexico. It was all drama, and that's all he want. And I told him, that. I'm like, it just seemed like you want drama. It just seemed like that's the type of lifestyle you want to live, drama. I don't want to live like that. That was very evident. Um, I, my question for you, Velvet, is I know that the, Mexico was a huge, um, it was a huge turning point for carbonation. Um, so much happened, and I don't even think we have enough time to sit here all night to talk about Mexico. But um, Mexico really turned up the heat for Nature Boy, and it also brought in the most views that he, he had ever had um, when it came to, to documenting and viewing his cult. Um, by the time that you guys were in Mexico, he, he got you pregnant, he trapped you. He damn near almost lost you and the baby's life. But I want to know, this is my first question about Mexico. Did you get any prenatal care in Mexico? when you? No, were no, none. The only thing he allowed me to have was a, was a, a village midwife who, who did not speak English and practically didn't know what the fuck she was doing to come and run my belly. That's it. That's it. I never seen a doctor. I never had vitamins. I never got checked up. I never got uh, my blood tested. I never got nothing. Nothing. Wow. And Serenity didn't either. Serenity was worse than me. She didn't have nothing, nothing, nothing. Like, nothing. Like, she didn't even get her baby checked until she had it. You was skinny. Well, that, was my, that was my next question. Um, I remember the birth of baby Ileana. And I remember you saying once that you didn't even know. I believe, I don't want to speak uh, out of turn, but I believe, I know pops will know, baby Ileana was breached or maybe sitting on your bladder. Both. Wow. I had complications because he wasn't taking me to get medical attention. Those medical complications could have been worked out if I was being seen by a professional. But because I wasn't, right. I was I was in excruciating pain and damn near on my deathbed, me and the child. Did the doctors at the hospital, I know that um, they didn't speak English and you didn't speak Spanish, but did they ever like try to uh, relay that message to anyone? so that that could be relayed to you how bad it was i don't know if they did but nobody told it yeah. nobody told me anything they yeah. told, didn't tell me a damn thing i didn't even know my baby was breached i thought, yeah, they, I thought that i didn't even know that i didn't even know that i didn't know that until my dad told me and i was like dad are you lying to me like i started turning the blind eye and he was like no your baby was really breached i'm like it was trying to um they was trying to get either her her mother, who was on the phone with Nature Boy, or um, him to agree to an emergency C-section. Oh. He said no. Then he asked her, and she said no. So they wind up having to um, go in with four steps, open up. That's why it was so painful. Um, right. Turn the baby and then get the baby to come out. And they and they explained that to me because I, I, I talked to them. The actual doctor who delivered the baby. So I ain't know none of that until after. I'm talking about a year after I had her. Yeah, because she was in so much pain. She would and try he, to sleep whenever she could. I mean, I remember watching her, and it was just like and he. It was a terrible experience after I had Eliana. 
he doesn't go into how he treated me after I, after we had Eliana. This nigga would tell me to get, he would call me weak. I would be laying there and my body, my stitches are still on my vagina. He'll be like, you're weak. Why are you acting weak? You need to show these bitches how it's done. Did it? I'm like, yo, I can barely walk. So, so like, not even two weeks after I had Eliana, I was on my feet cooking big ass meals for the entire family. I remember Every, I'm you about walking. Everybody. Yeah, I remember you walking with baby Eliana back to the hospital. You had just had her. Wow. Yeah, it, it was fucked up how he treated me. Like he treated me like I wasn't shit. Like. He did not let me heal. He did not let me recover the way that I was supposed to. And the, he was, he tried to say that uh, he took care of me because he had the women there by my side. But any woman knows if she get pregnant by a man, it's not another woman who she needs. It's the man who she needs. And I expressed this to him verbally. And this nigga told me that I was ungrateful, told me that I needed to I needed to be be grateful for what I had and the fact that women was um, taking care of me. I'm like, I don't need them to take care of me. I needed you. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, especially after birthing his child. That's exactly as women what we need and what we want is the love and compassion of the child of the man of the child we just gave birth, you know? <sighs> She was on her deathbed and he was insensitive to her healing. You were like this close to death. And yes, I was. That's nothing but a demon. Oh. Um, I, you know, there was a point I remember when Pops, uh, he revealed that Eligio slapped you or hit you while you guys were in the car and you had a bloody nose. Did you have baby Ellie at that time? I was pregnant with Eliana. I was like six months pregnant with Eliana when he did that. We were sitting in the car. We were sitting in the car. We was traveling to a dip. We was traveling from Belize to Mexico, I believe. And I found out that Nature Boy was talking to multiple women behind my back. And when I found out he was talking to these people, I was, of course, in my feelings about it. So I wasn't giving him none of my energy. Like, I was ignoring him. I wasn't talking to him. And he got really upset at me because I wasn't giving him any of my energy. So what he did was, he, um, I was sitting up and he, he started slapping me in my head, like at the top of my head over and over and over like just slapping me like this in the top of my head and I guess because you know as fragile as I was and as sensitive as I was during a pregnancy my nose started bleeding because he was hitting me in my head like this my nose started bleeding and when my nose started bleeding everybody in the fucking van seeing this shit was watching it he pulled me out the car to give me some air. And he was like, get up, get up, get up, through water on my face and stuff like that. And then double back after all of that shit happened, I forgave him for it. And then he got online and I was taken up with him trying to say that he didn't do that. But I did it. Off, I said that he didn't do it off of the strength to support him and uh, not make it look like he was a negative, bad person. But I, I'm starting to come to the, my realization that he he was only using me at that that moment he see nature boy don't give a fuck about me he don't give a fuck about his child he he's only gonna use us the only way that he can so that he can get make money so he can make a bean so he can get views so that he can attract more women more beautiful women to be with him and this is the only reason why he was using me and putting me in the position that he was but he was trying to break me at the same time <laughs> Um, this is off. I have to ask this. Do you think that his connection with baby Ellie, the way he's like, he's, it's, it's unhealthy to me, the way he will curse you out and say all he wants is his daughter. Do you think it's because baby Ellie looks like him and he has like this obsession with her or? I think he has an obsession with taking people's innocence. And I feel like his children 
are like his main prize to like I feel like his children are the are the entities that he can target that will really fuel his narcissistic psychopathic tendencies if that makes sense like get it taking my innocence like that's cool and everything like that's brownie points but to, but for him to have a child and then take his own child's innocence is like the icing on the cake for him like that's what i believe because he's surrounding his life with all of these women to have sex with all of these women to make his children together do you know what that means that means that he's going to be breaking and taking the innocence of every child that's involved. This is how he gets his rocks off. You know what I'm saying? That's what I feel. I feel like he has an obsession with Eliana because, number one, she's a girl. Mm -hmm. The boys, he could, he, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, cool, like, whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a boy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, okay, but a girl... A girl, if you have a girl, you can put semen in her, have more babies. You see where I'm going with it? Yes. You see where I'm going with it? With yes. a boy, with a boy, you have to marry a boy off to, you know what I'm saying, to a, to a other. Eliana was a perfect fit in his mind to breed his children together, to breed her with somebody, his child, his other child that he had, a boy who he had with another woman, to create more babies, to take their innocence. This is what I personally feel like. And that's a perfect segue to my next question for you, Velvet. Um, even after baby Eliana was born, I know that, you know, that the tribe was you know, kind of really hands on because of Nature Boy. Um, did you have any concerns about your daughter being around, you know, even the men in the camp that had previously kind of uh, exposed their own deviant and questionable sexual past? Did you, was that anything that kind of went through your mind at any point? Um, e any time that you were in Mexico about her being Wait, around can you ask me that? Can you ask me that again? So the guys like True Caliber, they all had really messed up. Like they they did uh they did lives where they talked about, you know, sleeping and having relations with their cousins and their siblings and and things like that. Like, did that ever trigger you at any point to be more careful with baby Eliana around any of the men in the camp, or were they ever like, did you did you ever have like, you know, this this fears about her being you know because you talk about nature boy trying to separate you from her at certain points throughout your time over there is that ever a concern of yours um for the most part Eliana wasn't really around the men she was around a little bit like around at certain times i never felt i had never personally felt that way when i was there i never felt that energy come from none of the other guys until there was an actual guy who came there and said that he wanted to kill eliana there was, oh, and then yeah. there was another guy there was another guy who came and said that he had visions of molesting eliana but that before that, before any of that shit could pop off or him, like that guy left the same night. But the other guy, Kite, he was always away from Eliana. Like he never was around Eliana. But that's when I started thinking that other people would do that to her. So I had to start creating. And this was a part of my escape. Like every single time when I was in these situations, I had to escape my the situation so when i would try to escape before i would try to escape he would always have eliana with the women the women weren't allowed to be around the men because nature boy separated the men and the women a lot of the times so there was no there was no uh a way for eliana to really be you know around the guys like that but i started thinking about the women doing some fucked up shit to my child not necessarily molesting them but just being fucked up to her like like pinching her or pushing her or hitting her or talking to her wrong you know what i'm saying not really nurturing her and being a mother to her because 
Nature Boy would try to separate me and Eliana and and the and say that the women needed to take care of her so that me and him could have more time to be alone and do this and do that. So I had to create situations around me being around Eliana and really taking that that role back. Like I had to literally take it back. Like you know what I'm saying? It was an interesting dynamic, but every time I felt like I needed to take my role back as her mother, I was already planning my escape. Like I was already planning my escape, like. Got you. Do you guys want to move on to the next chapter? Yep. Next chapter is Cookie's House. Wow. So, this is a simple question. I just wanted to know because Nature Boy said it on, um, many occasions that he was paying all of Cookie's bills. Um, I see that you guys really home because she gave up her rooms. We barely ever saw her. The house was just full of um, carbonation members. Did he actually pay the bills, like he said? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I never dealt with any of the money ever. So I don't know who was paying what the money were, where the money was going. I don't know. I can't answer that. Do you think Cookie was happy with the situation? I didn't like what was her disposition while you guys were all there? Like she kinda, was, what was daily at life times, like? like at time like for the most part she would just sit in on our meetings. We had a lot of meetings. So she would like sit in on our meetings and she would like um, just listen. Um, but uh, sometimes she would feel some type of way about certain stuff and then she'll speak up about it. Like when I actually went to Cookie's house and lived with her with them, uh, it was a very big issue with me being there because I was making noise. Like like when the fucked up shit was happening and I was like, stop stop it now like and calling the police and had child protection and she was like i don't want my house to be uh you know um on the radar and stuff like this and stuff like that so uh i was the most mainly the reason why we, we had to move out of cookie house uh in the time span that we had to because you know what i'm saying i was making a lot of noise when i went but uh when she when she did feel some type of way about something she did speak up but other than that, she would just listen. Like, for the most part, she would just listen. And I wanted to go back a little bit, back to before we get to cookies. Um, you were talking, We were talking about how protective you were over El baby Eliana. And this one is uh, something that has always been of interest to me. The time that your pops and Tina showed up. Um, how shocked were you and how, uh, well, I think you said earlier you were happy. Um, did you realize how a parent's love knows no bounds? I definitely appreciated my parents for that moment after the fact. Because I honestly, honestly speaking, in that moment when they came, it was I had all Nature Boy's energy over me. It wasn't me no more. It wasn't me standing there talking to them no more. That was Nature Boy coming out of me. So I was completely gone. You know, right. my spirit was completely gone. But after the fact, when I realized what actually happened, and if I was actually present, it would have probably been a different outcome. But I appreciated them for that after the fact because remind, remember how people are out here uh, have that's trying to see me fail. My parents were Tina and Dad. My dad was the only two people that I really realized who really had my back in the situation. That's who I grew up with. You see what I'm saying? So I felt they, I felt they heart over the camera. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, wow, they did this for me. Like, how could I ever step down? And I just forgave myself 
as quick as I could because I never meant that in the first place. I never meant to hurt them. I never meant to right. say none of this shit that I, and, and that's why I'm able to forgive myself for it because I never meant that. You know what I'm saying? It was a situation where other stuff was going on, under underhanded stuff was going on with the manipulation tactics that Nature Boy, and I didn't have a lot of experience as a young woman out here in the streets anyway, so I'm trying to figure it, I was trying to figure it all out, but after the fact, I was very grateful for that because that really showed me the true color of everybody who was around me, like literally. Yeah, yeah. I could see that, and I could see how at the time you may have been put in an awkward position. Uh but later figuring out, wow, my parents really do love me. Yeah. Because yeah. cause for a minute there, this is a lot of stuff I can't, a lot of details I really necessarily can't share from my childhood because it's very sensitive. But, you know, for when I was a kid, I was, I was, I grew up thinking that my dad wasn't, didn't love me that he wasn't there for me, that he was neglecting me when in actuality he was actually there for me. He was just doing the best that he could. And as a young woman growing up to, and to have my own child and to know what my dad was going through, I forgave him for the shit that I felt like he did to me in my childhood and I got over it because now I'm a mother and I don't have certain things to give to Eliana even though she needs it. But, you know, if she ever feel like I'm neglecting her in some type of way. I'll keep that communication, that communication open with her to talk to her. Like, look, baby, I didn't have it at the time, but I'm always putting in the work to make sure that you have. And my dad, even though he didn't talk to me verbally, he always showed it through his actions. You feel me? Right. And I will say this and let it move on. Sometimes we don't understand what our parents uh actually went through or that they were doing the best that they knew how until we ourselves become parents. Sweet Ma, can I, can I, let me, let me, I want to ask one quick question about Mexico and Velvet, you do not have to answer this if you don't want to, but I have, I remember capturing this live and I just remember being a little dumbfounded and I could tell in the live that you weren't completely comfortable about what was going on, but you were fresh off of having a baby and who, you know, we knew, we kind of knew you were going through a lot of other abuses there, but how did you feel about Aya pacifying baby Eliana? Like, what are your personal thoughts on that? And you don't have to answer that if you don't want to, but... I can't really give you the real answer because it'll probably incriminate me. Oh, okay. But okay. I could tell you. I could tell you that I didn't like that shit not one bit. And the reason why he actually took the picture of her with Eliana on her breast was to get me to out to get me to outlash. Because before all that shit went down, I told him, I said, "Don't put my fucking baby on nobody nipple. Let's go get her a pacifier." I don't give a fuck about none of that shit you talking about, raising the village, a kid, all that shit. Let's go get her a pacifier. He was like, well, I don't want to give her a pacifier. I want her to be all natural. He arguing with me about putting my baby on a pacifier. So at that point, in order to refrain from getting physically beaten with stitches on my vagina, I had to let him do what the fuck it was that he was doing. But... Not, not really, not really even understanding that in the end he incriminated his own self in the in the end. But I didn't like that shit at all, at all. I had I had enough titty to feed all of the motherfuckers in carbonation. You think I wanted to put my child on another bitch breast? Nope. That didn't give a fuck about me. She didn't. She was only getting close to me so that she can get close to Nature Boy. After I had Eliana, I was holding Eliana in my arms. This bitch had the audacity, audacity to sit in front of me and say, "Oh, I believe I'm supposed to be chief." This. I sometimes I wish that you would leave. What type of shit? It, and you think that this girl is gonna have my best interest? From the very beginning, I said I did never want it to be with Aya. From the very beginning. And look what she's doing now. But y'all got y'all sit there and be like, oh, well, she's under the circumstance too. She's being manipulated. The How Aya came and how I came to carbonation, melanation, was two different ways. 
See, I didn't go to Carbonation to fuck Nature Boy. I went to Carbonation off of the strength of the knowledge. This is why y'all see me proclaiming the bitches now or the bitches who came in Mexico he only came to fuck him. This is why they don't proclaim. Just, just to add to what you're saying, um, I remember seeing a line where you were telling Aya how you felt you didn't want to be with her, and, and I thought you were so mean, right? And I'm like, but it's just Aya's uh, personality. She's very, like, secretive, yeah. conniving. Yeah. She's secretive and conniving, he period. Like the victim, and you look like the bully in that case. And I'm glad that you brought this up. Aya Aya bullied women, like new women who would come to be our wives. She would bully them. She would do shit to. Let me watch my language. She, Aya would do stuff to the other women just to get them in trouble by Nature Boy, just so she could get kudos, just so she could get brownie points. And this was confirmed by Sybil. Um, so we believe that we call her and the FBI. Ra, and Ra, she did it a lot to Ra. Aya the Spire, okay. No, but I'm glad that you cleared that up because a lot of those past videos are still up. And I remember like looking at one and I'm like, oh my gosh, why are you so mean to her? She's so innocent. Aya, so, oh, she's so fragile. She played victim very well. You guys still Don't have questions? Don't let it fool you. Yeah, I could look like I'm, I was the bad guy the whole time, but I was the only person that kept it real. You ain't never heard nothing real come out of Aya mouth, F rule mouth, Malia mouth, none of their mouth. I'm the only one that keep it real, period. Manipulated, yeah. a, manipulated or not. Manipulated or not. That's why he wants your energy. Because you're different. They, actually, they feed off of his energy. <clears throat> Because they're they're lacking something too. I'm, I'm not saying that um, these people are not victims. They're lacking something, and they're 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 finding it within him. Even if it's abuse, they're getting some sort of attention, and that's sad. You seem to have been the strong-minded one, the strong one, the strong one. But um, you know, for the ones that did leave, big ups to them, big ups to you. I don't know if you guys wanna um. Go back to Cookie's house. We have more.